Hello from the Green Pine Barrens of Southern New Jersey, and welcome to Far Out Radio with Scott and Karen Teeters. I am Karen, and today is Friday, July 12, 2013, wishing you a peace-filled and pleasant day. It's Free Readings Friday here at Far Out Radio. You can call in for your free mini numerology reading from our guest, Evan Fox, You know what? That's Ethan Fox. And give him a call at 877-342-6673. Our guest, Ethan Fox, has been a practicing numerologist and astrologer for the last 20 years or so. More recently, he has become a spiritual teacher, leader of the Flower of Life Center for Human Evolution, and the founder and visionary behind the Awake and Empowered Expo, coming October 11th to 13th, 2013, Kobo Center in the Detroit, Michigan area. This program, Ethan Fox, offers numerology readings for our callers. Again, that number is 877-342-6673. Get yourself in line with the name that you use every day and your birth date. Numerology. Hmm, what is that? The vibration or frequency of the numbers related to your birth date and your name have significance and meaning in your life. When we look at this ancient art of numerology that goes back to the Greek philosopher Pythagoras, we see that everything in nature has a vibration and is characterized by its frequency, and of course, a frequency is basically a number. One might interpret this idea to mean that the whole world is made of numbers. Everyone and everything can be described as a combination of numbers or frequencies, and this is the concept behind numerology. Today's practical numerology exists to find the purpose of a specific human being and anything really, a business or a country, etc. And the human being's, his true potential comes through with numerology and it provides insights to reveal and develop that potential. In between readings this program, we discuss a variety of topics with Ethan Fox, including the importance of numerology in everyday life, numerology and astrology in relationships, and the body-mind-spirit connection and consciousness in the world today. Ethan Fox, are you there? Welcome to the program. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for having me on your show again. It's nice to hear your voice. Oh, thank you. I'm thrilled that we're getting together again, too, and I think we will many more times in the future. Here's your first question. Who you are now, Ethan, as a spiritual teacher, energy healer, astrologer, and numerologist is very impressive. I'd like for you to share with us the spark or sparks that fired you up to get on this path of what we like to call spiritual enlightenment. Sure. Well, I think I've always been on the path. I just didn't realize it when I was younger. Um, as I always, I always had a very unusual view of the world, even as a young child looking back. Um, but it was really in my early 20s, I, I, I guess it really boils down to I'm a very curious person, so I just can't help myself when I don't understand something. And, and I found myself uh, at a metaphysical bookstore and the bookstore happened to be advertising a class on witchcraft and and I didn't believe in any of this stuff intellectually I mm-hmm. didn't because I was a very intellectual mm-hmm. person and so I thought all right I've got to go check this out and see what this what this witchcraft thing is about and why people believe in this crazy stuff and so I so I went I went in this class and it turned out to be just a psychic development class where we studied about the human aura and so on and and I was probably maybe 20 years old at the time and in one of the exercises, we were doing an energy building exercise. Now, at this time, I had no idea that I had some sort of an energy and consciousness that was already with me. But at any rate, um, we did an energy building exercise in the class. And, and I, you know, and I know I, I, all the hairs on the right side of my body just stood on end. And I, you know, and it was a <laughs> physiological response that I could not rationalize. And I, and I could not understand how is that even possible 
that that's happening. And and it wasn't just goosebumps or anything like that. And and that was the thing that really stimulated my intellectual thinking that all right, there's something weird going on over here. I have to figure it out. And that really was what launched me into years and years of study and reading lots of books about metaphysics and and so on that that ultimately led me to understanding that I always that I came into this life with certain abilities that I was not aware of and I've been sort of writing the instruction manual of of that ever since. Very good. You are very passionate about numerology and astrology. Did you train or are you self-taught? How did you get so knowledgeable in those two areas? Well, I think with with anything in life, some of, we all have natural tendencies and abilities towards certain areas. And if you discover what that is, it becomes easy to learn it. I don't think every astrologer or numerologist is equally good because they don't, we don't all have the same tendency toward it. And for me, mm-hmm. I'm not professionally trained. I actually, um, again, it was in my, um, I want to say late, well, I don't know exactly what year. It was 1984, I think it was. I, I had a friend who, who was, um, who was a, he was in his 40s, but he was still a hippie. I mean, he had long hair and, I mean, a beard. He still, was very much uh, stuck in the 60s and 70s. And, and uh, anyway, he was very passionate about astrology and he would go on mm-hmm. and on and about astrology every <laughs> single day. I'd get together with him and I, it went completely over my head. And I, mm-hmm. uh, I ignored him, but he finally, it just broke me down to where I finally thought, all right, I got, I've got to figure out what this is about. So I went out and got a book and studied my own chart. And You and books, Ethan. Yes, me and books. Oh, you should see my <laughs> library. It's huge. Um, but... Uh, so I, I, so I decided to check it out. And I, after I studied my own chart for a little while, I realized, wow, this really works. And, and, and so there's probably not been a day since, since that, uh, that beginning that I have not studied astrology or numerology or somebody's chart or other. And, and I think more, you know, to the point now, I'm to the point now where I couldn't really learn from anyone else because mm-hmm. my own research has gone beyond that. But mm-hmm. uh, And I think you get that way. And with astrology and numerology, it's a lifelong study. You never, mm-hmm. you never stop learning. And for everything you learn, there are 10 more things that pop up that you want to understand. And, and when you discover that unique thing that is your unique passion, you, you, it, it becomes early, easy, easy to learn, and you, and you never want to stop. So for me, you that's just want to go. Exactly. You just want to go deeper and exactly. help more people. That's right. what you're doing. You're helping more people, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. When you do a reading for a client or a business, I know that you're uh, a great business person mm-hmm. and that you do help businesses. Do you usually uh, do? use both modalities, both astrology and numerology in these readings for insights? And, and how does that work? I use both for personal and business and financial because I find that, um, and you know, we may get into a discussion about Pythagoras here, but but I find that... We the, will any second now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I find that, you see, a lot of, there, there are so many different modalities of astrology and numerology and, and Eastern and Western techniques that are very, that are, they have a sort of a fundamental they have a foundation that is similar, but they are very, very different. And, mm-hmm. uh, and each one of them, if you speak to an astrologer or numerologist who practices in that one area, they will swear that theirs is the only way. But I found that when you put them all together into one system, you, your understanding grows exponentially. You can see things and understand things that you could not understand with one system alone. And so I do tend to combine them all. And in the area of business, business is a very complex uh, th- thing to understand with, uh, with astrology and numerology. And because I've been in business my whole adult life, well, most of my adult life, I, I followed my own travels through business and the financial world for a number of years. I was um, uh, trading the financial markets and I ran a, a large financial market organization. And so I used it in, in that uh, area as well. And so as I went along, I honed my understanding of what makes a person successful, why are some people successful, others not, and how do you take a person who may not be ordinarily successful because they came into the world with a certain kind of astrology or numerology, and how do you increase their level of success with this understanding? So it's, you know, it's a complex thing. 
Very good. And you're the person to understand these complex things because, mm-hmm. as you said before, you tend to be an intellectual and mm-hmm. you're so much more now. I get it. There's that music. And yes, we're going to get into the, your theory of Pythagoras on the other mm-hmm. side. Folks, you're listening to Far Out Radio, our guest. This program is Ethan Fox. Please stay tuned. And if you haven't gotten in line yet, you can still call for a free mini reading. Uh, be prepared with the name you use. Use every day and provide us with your birth date. That's 877-342-6673. And welcome back. This is Friday. It's Free Readings Friday. Our guest is numerologist Ethan Fox. And Ethan, we have a caller. I believe her name is Lana from California. Lana, are you there? And if so, say hello to Ethan. Yes, I am. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Lana. Hi. Did you have a question? And Ethan, you have a question for Lana in reference to her reading? I think we need your name, Lana, that you use on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just a mini reading here. So not the name that you were born with necessarily or that is on your birth certificate, but the name you go by on an everyday basis and also your birth date for Ethan. So he can take a minute and do a brief reading for you. Okay. Um, My name is Lana. That's Mm -hmm. what I use every day. Okay. L-A-N-A, and I was born on June 13, 1952. June 13, 1-3? Yes. 1952, okay, and I will need your your surname, your current legal last name as well. Sure. It's P like Peter, A-L-E-Y. Okay. And did you have a, a particular question so that I can just jump right to that since there are a million things we could talk about? <laughs> um, I guess, let's see. I feel like I'm in a crossroads in my life mm-hmm. right now. And uh, it's as if I have no history or no anything to you know, kind of guide me one way or another. Really, it's just like I'm just completely blank. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if if you have anything that you can tell me. Okay. Um, all right, so you, your life purpose number is a nine, and uh, your name's a six, which is actually pretty good, uh, that you've got a good name combination with the life purpose of nine. I mean, we can certainly tweak it a little bit, but... But that's uh, that's good. It it does tend to balance those two numbers out. I can tell you're 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 a more kind, gentle, soft-hearted person, caring, uh, family-oriented. Um, you are in a year number seven, and the the year number seven can be a year where you feel a little bit separated from circumstances and people in your life you can feel a bit lonely and distant maybe even if you were in a relationship or married or something the previous year um, this this year could be a separation from loved ones that you're experiencing and it can also be a year when a lot of people feel very disheartened about their life direction and some you know people quite often we go through depression in a seven year it's it's one of the low points of the nine year we we have nine year cycles so for every number one through nine there is uh there's a cycle and then at the end of nine we start back over again and the seven just happens to be one of those years where where the energy level is very low we tend to feel lethargic oh my often. god Ethan, yeah. you're so right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't even believe how right on target you are. That's so true. But at least I've got maybe two more years to go to look forward to. Well, the okay, so first of all, the seven year, when you get to your next, when you get to October of this year, you're going to start making the transition to your next year, even though your birthday is not till the following year. 
you'll start to see the transition to the next year happen as of the end of September of this year. And and so what will happen is when you make the transition to the eight year and the further you go, the closer you get to your birthday next year, you're going to see the eight year energy coming and becoming more dominant. And so the and so like the seven year, you would have started notice this year, last September, October is when you started to move into the seven year. And so that would have been the transition to a, a lower energy, more lonely, depressed, lethargic energy. And this October, you're going to move toward the eight year. And now the eight year is much more passionate, it's more aggressive, it's more driven. Uh, so you're going to see the return of that passion that you're you're feeling like you've lost. Uh, and the eight year, quite often people do make uh, dramatic decisions, financial decisions, as well as career decisions. So um, seven year, you know, it's not uncommon for, for someone to study some new area uh, or even pursue spirituality or, or increase their wisdom. I would suggest in this year, you want to do as much as you can to maintain your happiness level because it's really difficult in a seven year to do that. And you can do any number of things from supplementation, uh, with different kinds of herbal supplements that will increase your mood to, you know, to spending your time doing more fun things. But understand that in the seven year, there is going to be a little bit of distance between you and other people. You may either feel more reclusive or people who are normally close to you may not be around you or may not want to be around you. you your friend circle may, may be diminished and relationship opportunities may not seem so uh, opportune, you know. Um, but but that'll start to change in the eight. And then, so the eight and the nine, when you get to the nine, you'll start making the transition to a whole new period of your life. So you're sort of in that, that final phase of uh, your nine year cycle and by the time you get to your one to two year, you'll be going in an entirely different direction in your life. But don't worry so much about the seven year. The best thing to do in a seven year is to pursue a growth in consciousness or spiritual development, study some new area that interests you, especially if it's uh, pertaining to spirituality. That will keep your spirits higher and you'll make the most of the seven vibration and not fall toward the negative side of that. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing, like stellar. Thank you so, sure. so, pleasure. so very, very much. It's amazing. Um, thank you, Ethan. Sure, my pleasure. Thank you for calling. Th thank you, Lana. And we're just thank about, you. thank you, and uh, share this with your friends. Tell them to call in, Lana. Thank you so much. We've got about 30 seconds, I believe, till the uh, break, Ethan. Mm -hmm. There you go. There's the break. And I, I want to hear your theory about Pythagoras still, unless we have a caller during the break. So let's see what happens. Folks, you're listening to Far Out Radio. Our guest is numerologist Ethan Fox. Would you like to have a reading also? It's free. 877-342-6673. Catch you on the other side. And welcome back to Far Out Radio. Our magic carpet ride this evening is with our guest numerologist Ethan Fox. If you'd like a mini reading with Ethan like Lana just had, give us a call. It's free, 877-342-6673. Lana enjoyed that reading so much, we welcomed her to come back for another question. Lana, you have another question. I was so taken by the reading that I forgot, I guess, my most important question. Yeah. And if you don't mind, I'd love to ask Ethan. Yeah, um, go ahead. I, I would really like to, to get your uh, input on what I might do, what type of a career I can choose at this point in my life to bring in some income. Okay. I have so, a word. Go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead. I haven't worked for about uh, five years now. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, well, that may be a question that, that uh, you'll have to call me separately to address because we'd have okay. to spend a little bit more time. In the span of time we have here, I can't look too in-depth. But I, what I can tell you on the break, I just uh, opened up your astrology chart really quickly. And um, you're, you're in a period of time in your life where you're, you've been going through a lot of 
um, turbulent change in the last uh, in the last you know a couple of years, probably especially the last year and, and and now so many changes and probably a higher level of stress going on in your life and and if you've been working, you've probably been doing lots of different things to try to make uh, make things work. This is just a natural turning point of your life that you're in, aside from the numerology. And this is where astrology and numerology work very well in a marriage because, uh, I mean, in, in together, because um, you can see certain things with the numerology that you can't with astrology and vice versa. And so right. what I can tell you is you just have to ride this period out. Uh, and it's going to last for another couple of years during which a lot of there are going to be a lot of changes going on in your life you're sort of in the thick of it right now where we're you know probably you've noticed so many things going on and there's so much activity and you're um you can't the, the there's a lack of stability that's been um that's been present in your life in the in the recent years and especially you know in the present time that you're in um, yeah. you, you'll you'll pass through it, and when you do, on the other side, you'll find your life in a in a very different direction. The reason these things happen to us is because, left to our own, we just stay stagnant in our lives. And and when these sort of turbulent changes happen in our life, they reshape who we are as people. And as a result, we end up going in a completely different direction that is better for us, but that we would have never done on our own. So. So you have to keep that in mind that there is a good reason for this, even though it doesn't feel very good right now. Um, mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Yes. So so anyway, um, we can you know if you want to call me for a private session, I'd be happy to uh, delve into that more in depth. But but I can just tell you, just hold on, and the dust will settle eventually, and you'll be going in a new direction. You just have to let the um, let the evolution happen. And Lana, that so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that website that you can look up the contact information is Ethan Fox E T H A N N F O X dot com. That was a beautiful reading. Thank you, Lana, for calling in. I have a question for you, Ethan, about sure. names. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. names are really important when it comes to numerology, and it's kind of interesting what some of us women go through here. We were born with one name on our birth certificate, and then we get married, and then we get married, then we get married. I mean, some of us women have boyfriends, others like me, we get married a few times before we figure it out, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So what's the significance of all those names some of us uh, decide to take on? How does that affect our lives? Well, it's really quite fascinating. People don't realize the importance of a name and and the uh, significance of, of the woman changing her surname. Uh, I can go through... Um, and sit down with a woman and go through all of her marriages and tell her how she was different in every marriage and, but just based on the name change. And so mm -hmm. what I find quite often is, and I, and I see this a lot, where a couple was, to, you know, they were together for five, six, sometimes even longer years and everything was perfectly fine in their relationship. They cared about each other. And then all of a sudden they get married and the whole relationship falls completely apart and they get divorced a couple of years later. Well, what changed in that relationship? They obviously were fine together, they lived together. The only thing that changed was the name. And quite often, the when the name change happens, it, well, it will make the marriage or the relationship that was going well worse. And sometimes it makes it better. So, but, mm -hmm. but if you don't know before you change the name, whether it's a good decision or not for the stability of the relationship, then mm -hmm. you're walking into a gray area and and in some cases it will make it a better relationship and i've seen that too where where uh, a particular woman that she's gone through several marriages and then she gets married to someone and the name becomes more stable and that mm -hmm. marriage actually lasts so it's a very important decision and it's not just something that you, it should be taken lightly very cool. And I know you have a personal story mm -hmm. about your own name and a decision that you made to make a name change. Would, are you comfortable sharing that with us? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, it's probably too long a story to elaborate in detail, but I can say <laughs> okay. uh, my name wasn't always Ethan Fox. I changed it on purpose. And um, I changed it. Actually, uh, I've been using this name for probably three. Well, I've had it for three years on my mind, but I really only made it legal uh, a little over a year ago. And mm -hmm. 
And it's interesting because the the very month that I made it legal was the was the same month that I started so many other projects. Even my very first consciousness event and the expo took on a whole new life after that. Um, I, I my my original name and my birthday has a lot of very spiritual connotation to it, and so I had this very high energy spiritual. Uh, nature to me, but I've always been in business as well, and and um, always been a leader in some capacity in my life, and and it occurred to me, well, I knew that the next several years I was going to be going in a certain direction in my life, and so I changed my name so that the new name would give would um, draw on more of the strengths of my astrology chart in certain areas that I was not able to draw upon in the past so that I could make this future the most successful uh, that, I, that I could be and so that I could be the most effective leader and, uh, and so on. So you can't change your astrology chart, but what you can do is based on the name, you can pull in certain strengths and that's what the mm-hmm. name will do for you. Beautiful. On the other side, I have a question about nicknames. I know you're up for that. Folks, if you enjoy what you're listening to and you want to get a free mini reading from our numerologist guest, Ethan Fox, why don't you call in? 877-342-6673. We'll catch you on the other side. Welcome back to Far Out Radio. Hope you're enjoying this show. Our guest this evening is Ethan Fox, numerologist. We're giving free readings. Call in at 877-342-6673. Would you like to know who's going to be on Far Out Radio Monday through Friday? Well, we'll make it easy for you. Go to FarOutRadio.com, look at the upper right-hand corner, and there's something about updates. Well, just put your name in there, your email address, and we'll send out an update to you daily about who will be on the show that day and who's recently been archived, where you can listen free every day to all of the past shows. Isn't that delightful? Ethan, we're talking about numerology and people's names. And my next question, I'm going to use the example of my husband, Scott. His birth certificate says Kenneth Scott Teeters, but of course, when he was a kid, his dad was named Ken or Kenneth, so he gladly went by Scott, and that's how he sees himself and still use it to this day, but his birth certificate says, you know, um, Kenneth Scott Teeters for legal purposes, he'll still put, you know, on documents, K. Scott Teeters for legal signatures. What happens to a person who might be named, you know, William and goes by Bill or Richard goes by Rick or Catherine goes by Kathy. How's that work? Well, it's usually not a good idea to have too many different names because every time you use a particular name, if you're using one name as a legal name and and another name as a nickname, or in some people's cases, they use multiple names as nicknames, you're resonating a different frequency out to the universe with each name that you use in each particular area. And so what I find is um, if a person has a name that a nickname that they use with one group of people, they're going to behave slightly differently toward that group of people and have certain kinds of experiences with that with that group of people than they do with another group of people. So, um, so the name that we use every day is going to have a dramatic impact on on how we experience our life on a day to day basis. But it's going mm-hmm. to slightly alter what is on our birth certificate and what is our legal name. So. We ideally want to fa- use, well, we ideally want to use one strong name. And, and most people's names have certain weaknesses in them, but, but you want to find one strong name and use that name everywhere in its full form. So, um, so in the case of Scott, for example, um, mm-hmm. a- actually Scott would make him a much more warm and uh, lovable um, guy than, than if he went by Kenneth. Kenneth is going to have a little bit more of an aggressive personality, a little bit more direct um, versus, you know, versus Scott. Scott uh, Kenneth is going to be uh, more serious, more intellectual, maybe even a bit aloof, uh, sometimes uh, speaks uh, or communicates a little bit more harshly than Scott. Um, so, so there's a slight difference in, in, in that uh, personality. Now, 
Um, let me see now. With Scott, though, uh, I think Scott's a better name in terms of... So the, does he, yes, may I yes, say. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Scott will also make him... It'll all, not only make him more warm and stable and, and affectionate and be much better for marriage, but oh, yeah. it, it'll also make him more driven towards success and, and money. Yes. Now, yes. that can make him a bit too... Uh, focused on money though um, so it's not the perfect name but it's still mm -hmm. it's still better than Kenneth although Kenneth might incline him toward a little bit more intellectual study and spiritual study and that sort of thing so so you know mm -hmm. there's there's a difference there and, and you have to be aware of that and um, it's ideal to choose one name and make that the legal name and and uh, ideally choose a name that's going to give you the qualities that you want and, and stability of, of your mind so. He's seriously considering changing it legally. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Good advice. Thank sure. you. Mm -hmm. Now, you are interested in so many different areas. You are a person who's interested in the mind, body, spirit, emotions to balance your path. So, tell us, for example, about your interests in, well, your interest in spirituality. You're a person who's very interested in spirituality. How did that happen? Well, I'm not sure that I'm interested in spirituality as much maybe as it, you maybe you live it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really at the core of my my who I am and how who I've always mm -hmm. been. Didn't really realize even when I was a child that it was there, but uh, the older I get, the more I realize it was always there. So I don't know that it's um, it, it's probably whereas I've spent 20 years studying astrology to try to be you know to become better and better at it and mm -hmm. uh, my spiritual passion I never really pursued it sort of pursued me and and so I think um, you know it's always been there it's always going to be there it's not something I try to do and I don't even know you know why certain gifts that I have are there they're just there um, but it's it's it is at the core of everything that I do and all of my other interests have a foundation in in my uh, spiritual you know uh, side so I don't know if that answers your question adequately, but it does. Yeah, it's, it's and you're so spiritual that you decided to start the Flower of Life Center for Human Evolution in the Detroit, Michigan area a few years ago. I think that was just after you discovered this energy transfer talent that you have. Can you tell us about the Flower of Life? center, how that came about, how it's grown, and how people benefit when they attend your classes and events, and obviously get numerology readings too. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the, the foundation of it really is to, is to provide our community with tools and resources to live a happier, more fulfilling life. And, and so everything we offer is, is around that. And so, so even though we have a variety of things from health and raw food uh, classes and lectures on health and so on um, and we have a raw food potluck a group of people who get together and, and prepare food and share and so on uh, but we also have classes in Tai Chi, Qigong, um, I do my consciousness uh, event as well and we're about to introduce a few other things uh, such as uh, channeling class and, um, and a group that meets on health uh, really testing out a very, very advanced breakthrough health uh, technologies and techniques to improve people's uh, health and well-being. So it, there's a quite a variety of things, but all of it really boils down to we're trying to help individuals to discover new ways to to enhance the quality of their life and to live happier and and uh, you know and more fulfilled and and that's really the 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 fundamental purpose behind uh, all of it. Well, I give you kudos for doing that and adding such, uh, you know, a healing center to the community that you live in. And you're just living your passion. I totally get that. I know last time we talked, I was really drawn to one of the articles that you have written that it's about the secret. And we talked about the secret a little bit last time, but I have this marvelous quote that I'm just in love with. I'm going to give this quote and I'd love for you to comment on it. And in the second hour, you'll be with us in the second hour. Uh, we're going to talk about more about your upcoming 
um, Awakened and Empowered Expo. Here's the quote. What happened to those childhood dreams that were forgotten when we got indoctrinated into modern society? Is the goal of life for all of us the same? Should we all learn and apply the laws of the secret to become multi-millionaires or billionaires like the sex success stories of the rich and famous? Or is the secret to life really to find within us our true nature, our true purpose, and then follow that path? We all look physically different from one another, so why would our lives not be intended to express as uniquely? In more ancient times, parents consulted with an astrologer when their child was born so that they could understand why this soul incarnated into the world and how best to guide its life. Imagine how much happier everyone would be today if we still followed those practices. I believe that such a time will come again in the future. From my years of study and life cycles, I've concluded that our lives unavoidably take us down the path that was intended for us. If that is true, then why are the majority of people unhappy? Is it because they don't have the material success, or is it because they're trying to live someone else's life and not their own? I'd like to leave you with a thought to contemplate for a little while. The secret to fulfillment in life is to find your own natural path and then to follow it and live it to its fullest potential and ignore what everyone else says. But how do you do that? You can begin by turning off the television, turn off what society and your parents say you should be doing with your life. They don't have any more of a clue about your life than they have about their own. Realize that you already have within you the potential to be great. All that you need to do is to look within and perhaps for the first time, see yourself as you really are. Well said, Ethan, and I think you ought to put that in a book real soon. Mm -hmm. Would you like to expand that on that? Sure. Well, I think what, what I'd like to say is that uh, very few people have any idea who they really are, and, and it's not really their fault. Most of us have been conditioned from birth to think a certain way and to fit into a certain society's beliefs and, and structures, and even our parents willingly conditioned us in this way to fit into the society that they grew up in, and sure. they, don't, they don't know any different. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. conditioning that they received. Every day we we uh, the average person watches television or they drive down the street and you see marketing on the you know we're going to continue with that thought and talk with Ethan Fox the second hour folks that um, music kind of interrupt a really good thought that Ethan had but we'll continue with that so stay tuned this is Far Out Radio and we're going to have more Far Out stuff for you thank you Ethan we'll talk in just a few minutes <laughs> Hello from the Green Pine Barrens of Southern New Jersey, and welcome to Far Out Radio with Scott and Karen Teeters. I'm Karen, and today is Friday, July 12th, 2013, wishing you a peace-filled and pleasant day. It's a free readings Friday here at Far Out Radio, and you can call in for your free numerology reading with our numerologist guest, Ethan Fox, at toll-free 877-342-6673. That's 877-342-6673. Our guest is Ethan Fox, a numerologist, astrologist, a spiritual teacher, and leader of the Flower of Life Center for Human Evolution, as well as the founder and visionary behind the upcoming Awake and Empowered Expo. He has spent almost 20 years as a practicing astrologer and numerologist, as well as in the business and financial arena. In late 2010, Ethan experienced a spiritual awakening that changed the course of his life and Flower of Life was established soon after. This second hour, we continue to take callers for our mini numerology readings. We need your date of birth and the name you go by, your first and last name on a daily basis. 
Today's practical numerology exists to find the purpose of a a specific human being, or anything really, a business, a country, and the human being's true potential, and numerology provides insights to reveal and develop that potential. And this program, we discuss the Awake and Empowered Expo which takes place on October 11 to 13, 2013 at the Kobo Center in Detroit, Michigan. Here's the introduction to Ethan's expo that he is coordinating. It says, you are living at the precise moment in which the civilization of the earth will shift to an age of peace and enlightenment. The myths of a global transformation that will affect every aspect of your life. It's an incredible time to be alive, and the signs of this are everywhere. There are more people seeking spiritual truth than ever before in our history. Groundbreaking advancements in technology, health, and science, and an emergence of teachers providing opportunities for that growth. The Awake and Empowered Expo is a celebration of this global shift in consciousness and an instrument for thriving in a new era. Ethan Fox, are you there? Welcome to the program this hour. Thank you. Yes, I'm here. Very good. I have a question for you. How did you start? Several questions. Just follow me here. Mm-hmm. How did you start to you know, develop such a large enterprise as your Awake and Empowered Expo? For example, since you're a numerologist, were the numbers right? Did astrology direct you, or was it just something in your gut that spoke to you? For example, the event is to be held on October 11 to 13 of 2013 in the Detroit area. Did you study what you know, you know, numerology and astrology, to get the name and the dates just right for success and the highest good of all? Uh, yes, of course. I can't resist uh, to do that. And <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, So yes, the Awaken Empowered Expo, the name was a name that I, well, we as a group, now I've got a background in marketing and branding and so on as well. So everything's got to fit into all of the, uh, all of the areas to work otherwise. So it's very hard for me to name anything because it's got to fit so many criteria. I, I tend to make people insane because I have very strict criteria. And but anyway, as a group, we threw around lots of names, and, and I was constantly crunching the numerology to try to get the numerology right. And, and so, yes, the, the name, um, it isn't perfect, but, but to stay consistent with a, with a good brand message as well, uh, we came up with a name that, that has an extremely high success potential, as well as the date of incorporation, as well as the date of the event itself, yes. It's easy to remember. It flows off the tongue, all yes. those good things, and it has magical numbers, I imagine. Yes, yes. <laughs> but of course, at the same time, though, you asked, was it was I guided to do it? That's also true. I think mm-hmm. uh, I didn't really plan a couple of years ago to have an expo this of this massive size this you know coming up this year. I I was just sort of led in that direction and and one thing led to another and it just happened. It almost just happened of its own. Not to say we're not working very hard to make it happen, but but it just is is it wants to happen. I uh because of all the things that have just fallen into place uh in in progression. Uh, but at the same time there was a serious intention behind it and and I didn't leave anything to chance in terms of how to plan the dates and the name and everything. Very good. Well, I have a question for you. We don't have a numerology caller right yet, but I'm going to throw out a question to you. Here you go. It's this name. It's Karen Teeters. Mm -hmm. That's the name I go by on a day-to-day basis. On my birth certificate, of course, it says Karen Ann Teeters. I do not go by Karen Ann. You know, when I was a naughty girl, my mother used to call me Karen Ann, you know. So I'm just Karen, you know, just friendly Mm -hmm. Karen, Karen Teeters. And my question is, like you, you know, I'm interested in business. I'm interested and spirituality. I mean, I've, we have the show, Scott and I, that includes a lot of spirituality, a lot of things that we're interested in, alternate news, et cetera, metaphysical, geopolitical. And I'm also interested in it being a success as a business. So let me ask you that question, Karen Teeters. How's that around spirituality, around business success? Okay, so now that's a 
a little bit more complicated question because to really explore it we want to look at your astrology chart as well and also look at you and Scott together because if you and Scott make a good pair for financial success then anything you do will be successful even if your name was weak so there it's a much more complex discussion but I can mm. tell you um, now how do you spell Ann? A-N-N or A-N-N-E? Or? Yes, okay. A-N-N. Mm -hmm. Okay so so we're, we don't um, there are several schools of thought on numerology and astrology and um, in this case I would look at your first and last name and uh, actually, your name is pretty strong for for um, for a woman. Now, I would recommend different names for a man and woman for success and stability uh, in life. And your name is actually um, very very strong in terms of having success and actually and, and quite strong for being a radio show host um, as a communicator. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, you've got uh, you've got the perfect number for somebody who would be in either acting or show business or radio shows or anything like that. I actually have a similar soul number to you uh, and that's why I find myself in front of audiences quite often and so it's a perfect number for that. A lot of, lot of uh, actors and actresses and uh, radio personalities have, have that number. Um, you're, so I think, I think you've got a good name overall. I mean I would, may want to tweak little things but, but, mm -hmm. but you're in pretty good shape so I wouldn't change. I would go by Karen Teeter's uh, I wouldn't change that at all. You know, Scott. You know, Scott could probably use a little bit of change, but but he's not too bad either. Yeah, he's he's not too bad. I'll agree with that. But here's here's something I, I'd like to share with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you have some insight into it. I was not planning on being a radio show host. Mm -hmm. Scott just loves to listen to these radio shows. He's always commenting on them. About a year and a half ago, I said, you should do your own show. You're just such a great storyteller, etc. So we inquired with uh, one of his favorite shows. Um, and that is, you know, Jeff Rents, the mm -hmm. Rents Radio Network. We thought maybe there are some openings there. Scott inquired. He had been interviewed twice on Jeff Rents, and we got the show. Hey, that was that was luck. That was like what we're meant to do because Scott and I are always working together. We're two entrepreneurial spirits, if you will. But I was just planning on being the producer, helping him get guests, putting together the website because I produce websites, all that kind of good stuff. And I substituted for him once. And he says to me, Karen, I think you ought to do this on a regular basis. You know, let's make, you know, once a week, you can do Monday night, holistic night. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun. It's, I don't want to do it five nights a week, you know, but I love it. And it gives me insight as to what it takes to do the show and, and all that good stuff and to express a part of me, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's just uh, amazing. So my numbers say, okay, that's a good thing to do, right? Yes, yeah, and you would you would end up in this kind of role anyway, whether in some sort of role where you're expressing yourself, you you would be a natural communicator. It's similar, you know, we have similar mm -hmm. numbers, and so it's just mm -hmm. uh, a tendency that you would have, regardless of whether you chose this show or not. I have been in teaching. I have been in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, there you go. I think we've got some music coming up, folks. Ethan's pretty good, isn't he? Why don't you give him a call? 877-342-6673. If you'd like to know more about Ethan Fox, check out his website, ethanfox.com. And there's another cool website, awakeandempowered.com. Stick with us. We're going to talk more about this pretty cool um, expo. And why don't you call us with your numerology question? It's Karen Teeters. We'll be back soon. And welcome back. We are chatting with spiritual teacher and numerologist, astrologist, Ethan Fox. We're talking about numerology and a wonderful expo coming up, Awake and Empowered Expo. And that website correction again is awakeandempoweredexpo.com for you listeners who'd like to look that up. And 
we're talking about numerology. Do you have a question for, for Ethan? He will answer it around your numerology. And that would be giving us the name that you go by on an everyday basis, your first and last name, and, and your birth date. Call in. It's 877-342-6673. Ethan, while we're waiting for another caller, Tell us about the importance of numerology in our everyday lives. Well, you're being affected by it, whether you uh, pay attention to it or not. The, the, the house, uh, sometimes I'll go for a walk outside and I'll look at the house numbers as I'm walking by. And, and, and you can always tell what the house is going, well, you've got to have some amount of numerology training to know what to look for, but you can tell what the people li who live there are like, just based on the house and what their lives are like. And, wow. um, and and you know recently one of the we're probably going to get to this later but one of the presenters at our expo is is a gentleman who has uh, figured out that the, the human body is actually made up of frequencies and so he can alter the health of the body and he's cured a variety of very very serious illnesses simply by figuring out what number is missing from the body and then the person simply has to repeat that number and so what we're realizing is that we're constantly being impacted by uh, you know, numerology is just frequency. It's, uh, you know, our bodies are made up of frequency, the numerology of our name and our birthday, all just frequency that's resonating out to the universe and tuning into a certain, uh, certain, you know, frequency of information that affects us. And so what your name is determines not only uh, how you look at your life, but it also determines what kind of people are around you and what kind of relationships you're attracting, what kind of... Uh, financial opportunities you're going to bring into your life, uh, it, it makes a big difference. So, for example, if somebody had a, a name of a five versus a name of, um, say, a six, which uh, in your case, Karen, you have a, an expression number of six, so your, your first and last name equal to six, that's a very, hmm. very different personality. And so the, the five person very independent and, and uh, now they have a very innovative mindset and perspective. But if, if a person wants to, let's say they want to get married and they want to find a secure, long-term relationship, they're going to have a heck of a time with a five name, whereas a six name makes it much more easy. So um, so if a person, for example, one of your listeners is just cannot seem to hold down a relationship long-term, they'll increase their chances dramatically by altering the frequency of their name. And, and, and so, mm. you know, we're, we're subject to those rules, whether we pay attention to it or not. And so might as well pay attention to it and, 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 um, you know, live by our, you know, live our lives a little bit more in control of what we, you know, what we want. Very, very good. I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you a little bit more about this upcoming expo that you're putting so much of your energy into and your group's energy into. And again, that's the Awake and Empowered Expo that's coming up this October 11 to 13, 2013 at the Kobo Center in the Detroit area. Uh, every time I look at your site, you've got more presenters. How many presenters do you have lined up so far? Do you have enough days for all of them to present? <laughs> we do. Uh, you know, I haven't actually counted them, but um, we're, we, we have multiple events going on simultaneously. There are different tiers of, of uh, admissions, and so depending on what, what people want, you can purchase what you want or, or attend as many things as you want. So there is going to be some overlap in, in, mm -hmm. in the classes. Otherwise, it wouldn't even be possible to cram all of that into, into two and a half days. But, mm -hmm. um, but yes. So they have their choice. I mean, yes. there might be uh, an hour and you have three choices for that yes. hour or something like Correct. that. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes. And, they, and there's a variety of uh, topics from scientifically oriented, very highly technical subjects for the intellectual minds out there and to things like raw food and health and to consciousness related events. So it's, but I mean, they're all connected, um, but, but, uh, but there are different areas of interest for, you know, for people depending on what they would like to explore further. Now, I've got a personal question for you, and you have to answer honestly, okay? Yeah, no problem. All hmm. right. Now, I know that you have a lot of presenters, and you have a lot of different interests, and here you yeah. are putting this together. So which presenters are you most excited about yourself, Ethan? Huh. And tell well, us why. And tell us why. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm... <laughs> Besides yourself. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, I that's a hard question to answer because I had um, I was in charge. Well, not in charge, but I was heavily involved in selecting every one of them, and I wouldn't have put them there if I didn't find them all personally fascinating. But um, mm -hmm. what I so it's it's gonna be a hard choice to be honest. But um, but I will tell you that mm, probably a couple of the things that interest me most, and it's not one particular presenter because there are several who fit some of these criteria, one of the things that really interests me is the is the field of um, longevity and health because mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing just the absolute most phenomenal breakthroughs happening there. And if you watch the mainstream, you would never know this, but, but there is no longer a need to have any kind of an illness because I can tell you with certainty that there is a cure for everything out there and and so we're bringing several presenters to our to our expo who are uh, who are doing breakthrough work uh, in, in all of these fields and uh, and even uh, one of the presenters uh, Peter Garyayev who is uh, is a geneticist in from Russia and I, I talked to him about his work and and he said, you know, scientifically, what they're working on now, within 10 years, they'll be able to bring products to market that can extend our lives from eight to 900 years in excellent health. And, and, wow. and I, you can know, we all I, say, wow, folks, everyone else out there is saying, wow, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's not the only one. We have, a, like I mentioned earlier, we have um, Lloyd Meir, who is, uh, who is, has figured out that the human body is frequency and by, introducing certain frequencies we can alter the health of the body so so there is no uh, disease without a cure so the longevity and on the other yeah. side you have some time to think about sure. some of the other areas that you're really excited with the, about because you put this together so and, and you're into this so we want to know what areas you like Folks, this is Far Out Radio with Ethan Fox. You may go to Ethan Fox, E T H A N N F O X dot com and find out more about Ethan and certainly explore his awake and empowered expo dot com and find out about this expo. Stay tuned, we'll catch you on the other side. And welcome back to Far Out Radio. Our guest this program is Ethan Fox, numerologist, astrologist, spiritual teacher, and father <laughs> to a really cool expo coming up, Awake and Empowered Expo. You can find more information at awakenempoweredexpo.com. Do you have a question about your life? Ethan can answer it around your number. You may call in 877-342-6673. Ethan, as we're waiting for our next caller, we were talking about the presenters that you are most excited about. And you were talking about the area of longevity. What other areas are you really excited about? And tell us about those speakers. Sure, we have um, we have another scientist actually who is uh, his name is uh, Gennady Shipov. He's actually from Russia as well, um, but he is working in some very advanced technology. Uh, and in conjunction with him, actually, this is I've never announced this to the public yet, but we're um, putting together sort of a technology group within Flower of Life. We have several subgroups of Flower of Life that are working in different areas that we didn't talk mm -hmm. about earlier. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so one of the things we're doing is bringing together scientists and inventors to start producing technologies and releasing them out to the world as we're doing it. And But anyway, so Dr. Shipov is working in, um, he's carried Nikola Tesla's work forward to where uh, he wow. has produced free energy technologies that are working, viable technologies. Uh, and he has also developed propulsion systems that don't actually use conventional fuel. They don't really use fuel at all. They, um, they, and they don't use propulsion in the way that we think of it conventionally, where we have a rocket that, that burns fuel and, and the fuel uh, produces propulsion by pushing up against the air beneath it to move the rocket, um, or even a jet engine that moves air. 
his propulsion system does not actually move anything. It just simply relocates in spacetime. So, so you have a mm. spacecraft that really it moves like a UFO uh, spacecraft, and and so this technology is real. It's here today, uh, and and so he's developed uh, a, a propulsion system like that. Uh, he's also going to be demonstrating on stage. He's got a device that he can use to move objects with his mind. Uh, so. So, so he's doing some work there. Oh my there. goodness! Oh yeah. my goodness! That's worth the price of the ticket right yes. there. <laughs> yes, and we have this other gentleman who we can't bring him to the expo this time because he is—he's uh, actually the very same weekend, all three days, he's performing a live demonstration uh, of his new technology. But we're thinking about broadcasting it live, doing a web stream of his demonstration, so that we may do that. Um, but anyway, his name is Tom Palladino, and he. He's um, and I could be mistaking where exactly he's doing this, but he's what he's going to do. And Nikola Tesla did this as well, where um, Tesla demonstrated that electricity could be transmitted wirelessly. And unfortunately, because he was financed by uh, J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. who owned copper, you know, manufacturing and wanted power mm -hmm. lines, he could never do that mm -hmm. forward. But but yeah. Tom Palladino is demonstrating on the same weekend transmitting electricity across the country from one place to another and lighting up a building on the other end of the country. And um, so so these are the kind of things that are real <laughs> wow. that are yeah. that are happening today in the world that you would not know that, that are happening, but it's really moving us into an entirely different uh, future for the world. Uh, and so our expo is all about that, even though it seems like there's so many different topics. At the foundation, it's really this emerging consciousness and the repercussions on all aspects of our life that that will have. So, so you've told us about your favorites, so I'm going to ask you to tell you about my favorites, mm -hmm. and that would be the spirituality, the energy healing, the metaphysical. Who do you have that jumps out in those areas that you'd like to share with our listeners? Uh, sure. Well, I'm doing my inner, my consciousness raising um, uh, event there as well. So, which is really about raising the consciousness of the entire audience, which is something that I uh, have a unique uh, area of gift in. Um, mm -hmm. We have um, we have uh, something. Uh, we have several healers there who are working not not necessarily in consciousness, but in vibrational healing. And I. And they're doing absolute breakthrough work. You don't want to miss that. I mean, especially if you have any kind of an illness, whether it's serious or minor, you could walk away from that event without it because because this is the the kind of uh, how powerful this stuff is. And so there are several people there doing that. Of course, we have uh, Raf, uh, fully Raf Christina there, who's uh, very. I well love known. her. Yeah, she's, she's so young and so cool. <laughs> yeah, she is. So we have um, so we have that health. Um, you know, that health component and the raw food component, which is really essential. And, and most people don't realize this. And, mm -hmm. and the raw food diet, I'm not saying everybody has to go raw, but, but what I can tell you, what I can tell you is from having run a raw food group for about seven, eight years now, mm -hmm. when a person switches to a raw food diet, their consciousness grows dramatically. I mean, they, their, their whole perspective on life changes, they become more positive. And there mm -hmm. is a consciousness raising effect that comes simply from from that alone. Uh, so, um, so that's a huge part. And we have uh, Doctor. Uh, before, yeah. before you go mm -hmm. on to the next, we have somebody that's taken us up on our offer okay. for numerology reading. Our caller is Cherise. I'm hope I'm pronouncing that right from Illinois. Cherise, say hello to Ethan. Give him your name, your first and last name you go by, and your birth date. Cherise, hello. Say hello to Ethan. Uh, hi, Ethan. Hi, Cherise. Um, and, um, well, do I have to give up my last name on here? <laughs> well, I or, will need it if you, well, I mean, we. I could go more generally. Why don't you give me your birthday and we'll start there and I'll tell you if we need to go any further. What's your birthday? Okay. January 2, 1959. Okay. January 2nd, 1959. Correct. Five nine, yeah, one, nine one nine five nine, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And did you have a question? Well, yeah, I I was, I was thinking real hard about how to put it, you know, more simply. Um, but I've I've kept it myself for a a whole lot of years, and I'm feeling 
like I'm done with it now, but um, I'm kind of, I want to, you know, I, I think I try to, to broach with other people, like emailing people, um, you know, I have interesting things that say and contribute, but no one would write that to me. And um, so it's like I have these closed doors and I don't know. I, you know, okay. do people, Charisse, I mean, Charisse, I, Ethan is going to have a few minutes to think about that because we have to go to our commercials for a few minutes. Will you hang on the line, Charisse, so you can, sure. you know, re-ask your question and Ethan will be able to fi- think about it for a few minutes. Folks, you're listening to Far Out Radio. If you have a question, 877-342-6673. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back. We are talking with Ethan Fox, astrologer, numerologist, and founder of the Awake and Empowered Expo.com. We're talking with our caller, Sharice, who has a question for Ethan around numerology. And since we had a break there, Sharice, could you repeat your question for Ethan? Yes. Uh, I figured how to narrow it down a little bit more. Um, it's about... Uh, figuratively closed doors um, from people will there be a time when people will open doors more and like answer me when I email them instead of um, making me feel like I'm an interloper if I try to talk to people and they don't write back or well does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So uh, I think what you're experiencing is you've been, um, you've been probably sort of feeling like your life is at a turning point and um, you're not really sure where to go. You know, a lot of things that you've been trying haven't been working out. People from your past are sort of falling away from your life and even circumstances from your past. Uh, material things as well as relationships have sort of been drifting away. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. yes, it does, and uh, a lot of rejection too. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. just, or or just not. I mean, not outright rejection, but uh, maybe that's the wrong word. But I'm um, like a lot of ignoring. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, not writing you back and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, and I I don't want that. You know, mm-hmm. I I mean. I mean, there's some people, and everyone, you know, can't get enough of them. They they have too many calls and emails, and I'm the extreme opposite, and I hate it. Yeah, I just hate it. What do I do? So you've only so you've been experiencing this more so in the past uh, several months, maybe even since September or somewhere that time period, right? Has it been worse during that time? Or has I've, it been all I've along? been experiencing it. Yeah, it, it's been uh, going on for um, quite a number of years, mm-hmm. but I think more so in like in the past um, year and a half. Okay. Year. Yeah, so part of the problem is for the past year and a half, roughly, you've got certain things going on in your astrology and your numerology that um, you're you're at a at a critical turning point of your life and. You are also in a year number nine. And so the, the, the challenge, the advice I'll give you, nine is the end of the cycle. The earlier caller was in year seven, and, and I said how in a couple of years she'll be in year nine. You are at that nine-year period. And so you are at the end of a cycle of nine years. And so your life is, your life as you know it is, is coming to an end. And what that means is that you're going to have to let go of the past. And so quite often... That past may involve material things, you may have to move, you may have to give up physical things in your life, and you will have to give up relationships. And and so in the nine year, the most suffering that people experience are the people who try so hard to hold on to things that no longer want to be in their life. Now, that doesn't mean that all these people who are ignoring you are going to go away permanently, but a lot of them may. 
And what you need to do is to accept that in order to move forward into the new future that's coming for you in the next couple of years, you will have to leave a lot of that past behind. You see, I'm, I'm now, uh, a few years ago, I was in the nine to one year cycle that you are now in. And um, my life that was before that is, is barely a reflection of the life that I'm living now. And, and the life that I'm living now is much better for who I am now and, and the direction that I want to go in my life. I wouldn't want to go back there. So, but from where you are in the nine year, it can be hard to, you know, because the nine year, the problem is the past is falling away, but the future isn't here yet. And so you feel like you have nothing to hold on to. And the people who were there once, you can't hold on to them either. It's sort of an unknown period of time where the future isn't coming yet, but the past is going away. So you've got to trust and have faith. That's the most important thing you need to know right now is, is have faith that that the things that are moving away or the people who are ignoring you, it's for a reason. It's because there's a new vibration coming into your life that won't be quite clear to you until about a year and a half down the line. And so from this October until um, about until about a year and a half into the future from then, you will be developing more and more moving in the new direction of that new life and it'll become more clear to you as you get there but the nine year can just be a period of time where you feel like you don't know where your life is headed and you can feel very easily let down but again similar to the seven year a nine year is a great time to explore your spiritual side whatever that is whether you are you know a particular religion or whether you're just spiritual uh, the more you you Focus on that side of yourself. And if, if you're into consciousness development and so on, that would be the best thing to do. Those things will provide you with the anchors that you need in the nine year to find the faith that you will need to get to the other side of it. And, and the closer you get to your next birthday, the more you will start doing new things that will guide you in the new direction. But ultimately, it's about a year and a half from now where you'll know with clarity where your life is heading. And at that point, you'll have a whole new circle of friends and people who uh, are part of that new life. Um, but for now, you have to work on developing your faith uh, because your life is not going to settle down just yet in a new direction. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was feeling like there's... what Wondering if there's anything for me to look forward to. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it would feel like there's nothing to look forward to, but... Which is kind of scary because that takes you down dark, even darker thoughts, yeah. and which I don't, you know, you know, like not wanting to stay here <laughs> anymore. Yes, right. But um, there's always but everything, to. everything to look forward to, Sharice. That's what this experience on this planet in these physical bodies is all about. Experiencing more and more. There's always something to hope for. And I think that's what Ethan is trying to express to you. It's a time of change, but it's always a time of hope, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. I, it, think so. I can, I can yeah. understand looking at your astrology chart. It, it is easy to lose hope with what's going on in your chart right now. It mm. happens to everybody in their night. Well, not everybody experiences it the same degree as what you're experiencing it, but but everybody has uh, that feeling of hopelessness to some degree in a nine year. Now you've got it maybe a little bit more than some, but the but the thing is, it's not going to last. But you have to endure through this period to get to the other side where you start seeing the new opportunities for hope. And I can guarantee you, you're going to see it in the next twelve to eighteen months you're going to have an entirely new perspective on your life and you're going to feel that passion and that fire in you to, to go in a new direction again. But for now, you have to, this is a good time to go within and to be contemplative, to develop your inner self uh, and, and prepare and be willing to let go of anything and anyone that is, is, is uh, not wanting to stay in your life and prepare yourself for this new future you know, in, in nature, everything happens in cycles. We have spring, summer, everything grows. and fall, it sort of levels off. In the winter, everything dies and, and it comes back in the spring. So the, those periods of rest, like the winter time, when there's nothing going on, doesn't mean nothing's happening. All that's happening is happening beneath the surface of the soil. There is inner development happening so that the following spring, 
the seeds can germinate and grow again. You're at that winter period and you just have to weather that out until you get to the spring. But the spring will come, I can guarantee that. Spring will come. Thank you, Sharice. We have to say goodbye to you right now, but I encourage you, if you'd like to contact Ethan at ethanfox.com, E-T-H-A-N-N-F-O-X. And Ethan, we have just a few more minutes. I wanted to take this opportunity to present our listeners with your offer. With your offer, uh, Far Out Radio listeners, um, we have an opportunity to receive an in-depth 90-minute astro numerology consultation through the end of July for $150, a savings of $50 off prices, and a consciousness energy transfer session remotely with Ethan through the end of July for a discounted price of $35. You can schedule this at ethanfox.com, E-T-H-A-N-N-F-O-X. For a limited time, the Awake and Empowered Expo is at a special discounted price for our listeners, too. A general admission pass for thirty for thirty dollars, which is a fifty percent savings, just use the coupon code Capital Far Out Radio to receive the special pricing. Go to Awake and Empowered Expo dot com. And in the weeks in he- ahead, Ethan, I am looking forward to this because in the weeks and months ahead, we will be interviewing some of your most amazing, awake, and empowered presenters. So I want our listeners to look for those. We announce our guests on a daily basis with our newsletter. Sign up on faroutradio.com in the upper right-hand corner. Boy, did I squeeze in those commercials or what, Ethan? Yes, you did a great job. Thank you. (laughs) Very good. And I think we hear the music in the background. Ethan, you and I are going to talk again soon. There's no doubt. We'll talk about some of these wonderful presenters who's going to be on Far Out Radio real soon. And you and I, probably in the next month or so, are going to have another one of these Friday night evenings. It's Mm -hmm. been fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Folks, more Far Out Radio next week. We are going to 7 to 9 Eastern Time, more prime time for Far Out Radio. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you soon next week. Thank you. The contents of this interview, or from Awake and Empowered Expo LLC from Ethan Fox and Flower of Life Center for Human Evolution, is for informational purposes only and does not necessarily reflect the viewpoints held by these organizations or individuals. Always consult with your doctor or health professional before making any changes to your diet, lifestyle, or prescription drug use. Please understand that you assume all responsibility and risk for the use or misuse of this information.